Hello everybody, welcome to another painting video with myself, John. In this one we're going to be tackling uh, the Ghost Wolf from Wild West, Wild West Exodus. Wild Wolf Exodus. Wild West Exodus. Uh, great model, great um, starter set that he came with. I cannot remember, is it the Howl? The Ghost Howl or something? I think the, the Posse starter box is called. A lot of great characters in there, really interesting. But I thought I'd take Ghost Wolf because he just the, the sculpt was amazing the the detail on the sculpts fantastic and i'd recently been playing with some sisters of battle and doing some sisters repentia so i was getting to work with more skin tone than i usually do and when i sort of nailed that i thought all right it's time i pick a model that uh, has a lot of skin showing and the ghost wolf has a fair amount of it so <laughs> i took what i did on my repentia and translated it to ghost wolf and I think he's turned out very nice. Simple as always, just to get him down on a tabletop. Always remember we're painting to that sort of level on most of the, the videos that I do now. And that's because I don't think we need to be painting to display standards all the time. I think there needs to be shown a way of doing something that's effective and still good looking to put down on a tabletop without busting your nut over taking hours and hours and hours. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this one. I certainly did. And um, yeah, let's get stuck in. So getting started on our ghost wolf here, uh, he is an impressive man, I have to admit. That's, his, his physique is making me rather jealous. So we're gonna start with the skin tones. And what I want to do here is just try and show you, because I'm going to mix a little bit of paint here. So under this camera, I know it's going to be a little bit blurry down there, um, but we're gonna be going with uh, heavy skin tone first, which is a Vallejo Extra Opaque. So it's kind of like the old school uh, Citadel foundation paints. A lot of pigment contained in that. We're going to use that as the base mixed with a little bit of Rhinox Hide. Now I'm doing this because I want the skin to have a slightly more tanned appearance than it does normally uh, with just this. So let's put a little bit of that down onto my little... I'm going to call it a palette, but it's a very loose term. <laughs> <laughs> for it. So I'll put a bit of that down there. We'll open up the Rhinox hide and we're going to take not much of this, just a little bit um, just from here. I think maybe a little bit more, just about that much. So not very much. It's Again, it's also quite a strong pigmented paint because it's a base coat and then we can start to mix it in and see if we can get a tone that is pleasing enough just it is literally just to add a slightly darker tone to the base paint now i don't mix very often and i've never painted anyone uh, i've never painted a miniature that wasn't just a, a regular uh, caucasian and i don't have a lot of experience with skin color anyway so this is a bit of an experiment and people tell me I'm I'm wrong and I've done this wrong or something like that. And yes, I'll I'll understand. I totally understand if people would disagree with my um my approach here. I think if we just mix the whole lot here, we're gonna get a tone that's just where I want it to be. So it's just a tad darker or a tad deeper than the original color, which is fine. What we'll do now, move that to the side, close my paint, and we will bring Mr. Ghost Wolf back in. And now we're just going to go and uh, base coat his skin in our slightly darkened heavy skin tone. It may need two coats, I'm not averse to just giving him two coats of this anyway just to get a nice solid color. I will say as well I've base primed or base sprayed the miniature with um, Citadel's Wraith Bone Spray um, because I've been working on my Sisters of Battle recently and I was doing a lot of uh, Sisters Repentia and the, uh, the skin tone that I went for uh, was very basic but the effect, the, the actual end result was was quite good so I figured I'd really like to show that, and this this guy has plenty of skin uh, to paint. So I'm hoping that if I modified my original approach 
carefully enough that I would get the skin tone that I want for him. And the, the Wraith Bone is only really there just as a base layer of paint, but it will add a bit of brightness to the skin, even though I've added a bit of a, a darker tone to it. So we'll push on with this, get it down and see what it looks like when it's dry. With the base coat of our skin down and dry, it did take uh, two coats and um, it's now time to move on to shading it. So for the shade, I'm going with Green Stuff World's Ink Wash uh, Picatum Flesh and I've added a little bit of Flow Improver and Thinner to the mix because I've noticed using it straight from the bottle, it tends to streak a little bit. So we're going to be taking some of that and just applying it over all of the skin. And it's just a case of getting this into all the recesses and making sure that it settles where we want it to. We don't want it to pull in areas we, that is going to hurt the, the overall effect. But all in all, with a bit of flow improver, this stuff, uh, this wash ink, really does settle very nicely on the miniature. And what it does is not only shade, but because it's a, an ink that's going over the paint, it's, uh, it adds a bit of a tint as well. So we're starting to build up that sort of tanned look. But anyway, we'll apply this, we'll let it dry, and then we'll see what the next step will be. So with the Bacadam Flash uh, wash ink down, I think we're really onto a winner here, I think. It's, it's starting to look really tidy. And, um, you know, in reality, you could almost leave it like this. You know, it's it looks good. It, it does look good. Uh, what I'm going to do now, though, is I'm going to change it up a little bit. We're going to start applying some dry brushes. The first dry brush is going to be our heavy skin tone, just plain heavy skin tone, because I know it's a little bit lighter than the base coat, especially now with the, uh, the ink down. So we're going to dry brush that. And I know what you're thinking. <clears throat> you know, you're you're basically painting a Caucasian guy. I'm like, I know, I know, but I'm trying to remain uh, <laughs> with the paints I have and, you know, let's not get too much into that. So we're going to take the skin tone and give him a dry brush of that first. And what this will do is help with the uh, the wash. It will help tidy up the wash, keep it in the recesses a bit more and start to highlight up the skin that's on the higher parts of the mono of the miniature. So particularly down the legs there we're gonna see a lot of tidying up with the ink. And around these markings that are on them as well. Okay so that looks pretty good. Now, from there, we're going to do another dry brush and we're switching up to Cadian Flesh Tone this time which is just a bit more, it's like the heavy the heavy um, skin tone but it's a bit more vibrant so I'm just going to uh, prep my dry brush with that and what I'm looking to do this time is instead of going all over we're going to just go in one particular pattern. So we're going to try and dry brush in a vertical pattern, which in theory should just start to highlight his skin a bit more than what the, uh, the skin tone has done, what the heavy skin tone's done. And it starts to pick the areas where light would be shining down upon him. And we'll just break that habit a little bit and just go across the face. I have to admit, this guy is an absolutely incredible sculpt. There's a lot of character in there. There's a lot of sense of, I'm in charge. There's a lot of power about him. He doesn't need to be dynamic because he's showing his authority just through his stance. And his physique, of course. Like His physique is still incredible.
and I think that is looking pretty damn good. So, with that in mind, we're going to do a very final dry brush, just to sort the skin out. We're going to be taking some Kislev flesh, and we're going to be applying it. We're going to be doing a little bit of a mix again. So let me let me bring this tub back in because that's kind of what I'm using for my mixes. And if I have an appropriate brush, which I apparently don't, <laughs> what am I doing? Uh, so I'm going to take some Cadian flesh tone first. I'm going to put that out there. Okay, uh, I am then going to take a little bit of Kislev. Kind of like what I did with the, the heavy skin tone initially, and just mix the two. Like so. And then we're going to use that as our final sort of dry brushy highlight. So let's bring him back in. And what I'm doing is just the lightest of touch. And what this is doing is really bringing out the muscle tone. And across his face it should pick out his jawline and his nose very nicely too. So this is one simple way around, you know, a lack of confidence in perhaps mixing your paints a bit more or blending and stuff like that. I find that, you know, light dry brushes do help. They'll never replace a good blending technique. There'll be a lot of professional painters out there will tell you you may as well just be blending at this point. But I think for a slightly quicker result, a lot of professional painters will know that's a quick, uh, a quick application, but I'm I'd be happy with that. I think that looks all right. So what we could do, if we're feeling a bit more adventurous, I don't know if I'm feeling adventurous, but we're going to try it. So I'm apl I've applied a little bit of um, flow improver to the higher, to the final dry brush mix. And what that's done is turned it into a very thin layer of paint. A very thin, very, very thin, actually, maybe too thin. And what I think is we could maybe just, particularly on his face, perhaps, if I can get it into focus. And you just add a little bit of brightening to his face. It's probably not going to work that well. But it might make that, his face, a little bit more apparent. So let's just see, maybe we can smooth out some of our, our dry brush work. By just getting a thin layer of this down. tops of his hands and his arms here. Maybe do a little bit on the top of his pecs. Because the dry brush obviously won't really reach in there. And that's an area that I, I definitely see is, is lacking a bit of a bit of highlight. So just get the top of his pectorals there. And that should do it. So I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. And I think that'll be our skin tone done. After that I can start base coating up his clothing 
and this pelt on his back. So at this point we're going to start base coating, like I mentioned before. We have two base coats we're going to do, which is Citadel Base Grey Sear, and we're going to be using that on the wolf pelt. And for his clothing, we're going to be going with Citadel Steel Legion Drab. So let's just start on those, and um, we'll do most of it off camera to be fair. We, we don't need to learn how to base coat, I hope. I don't think anybody should need to know how to base coat by this point. So we're just going to take all the clothing and take it to the Steel Legion Drab. This may need two coats, so we're going to be careful with it. And just have a nice solid colour at the end. So I've applied the base coats to his clothing. I uh, also included the markings on his shoulders and his thighs. Uh, I did those in grey here as well as the wolf pelt. Uh, because we're going to try and do a little bit of a simple glow on those. Nothing, nothing fancy. Uh, these I haven't touched yet. Uh, I probably will actually during this step because I'm going to make these look sort of a stony looking blade but that's not too difficult to do uh, and in general we're going to just work on these now but we're going to start with the wolf pelt and I'm going to try and do a, um, a North American wolf style so there's a lots, there's lots of greys and, and almost blacks in there uh, as well as some browns. So I've picked out two contrast paints I want to use. So we have Basilicanum Grey and we have Skeleton Horde. Now Skeleton Horde I'm also going to apply to his clothing as well. So we'll do the Basilicanum Grey step first and uh, then we'll move on to the Skeleton Horde. So pardon me while I shake the bottle up a bit. The Basilicanum Grey is basically going to cover most of the uh, the wolf's markings. So I'm just I'm going to get some onto my brush and then I think we're just going to try and basically try and get a sort of a wolfy pelt look. Dab and just let it, let it work a bit. backs of the ears. And go a little heavier. There we go. And just work down the back of the pelt a bit here. Okay, so while that's still wet, we'll crack open the skeleton hoard. And what we'll try and do is edge it and let it blend in a little bit as we're going along. So let's uh, let's hope this works. <laughs> Leave the edges of it just in the grey here, I think, because then we'll uh, we'll do a bit of apothecary white just to fade it through. It's always difficult for me, like as I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking at reference images as I go, and I'm probably still getting it wrong. So, I 
It's not the worst wolf pelt in the world, I'll tell that much. Now, let's get, uh, let's see if I have my apothecary white hanging about somewhere. Yes, I do. And I'm just going to try and edge the pelt in, again, while the skeleton hoard's still, still wet. We can see if we can blend it a little bit as we go. Even if it looks, even if it's wrong, it may look interesting enough to be all right. So, I think it looks quite interesting. So, That isn't bad. That is definitely not bad. Hopefully, once that's all dried, dyed, and stuff, and we'll give it a little bit of a, a white dry brush at the end just to wrap it up. I think that's going to be fairly, fairly good and convincing looking. Anyway, let's get onto the skeleton hoard now for the rest of his clothing and leather work. It's going to be pretty straightforward. So we'll put this down, let it dry, and then when it's all dry we'll come back and look at our next step. With the contrast paints all dry, we're taking a dry brush colour, Praxetti White, and we're just going to very briefly highlight up our wolf pelt with a little bit of this. Okay, so the pelt isn't looking too bad. Quite happy with that. We're going to move on to the two blades on his back. And for that, we're initially going to be starting with a contrast paint. And we're going to be starting again with Basilicanum Grey. Let's give it a bit of a shake. And then it's just applying a coat of that over the two blades. and we'll paint in the leather straps that are holding them in place later on. Okay. From here, uh, while that's drying, I'm going to, uh, let me see here. B -b 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 where is it? We'll take another dry brush color here. We're going to take some Tyrant Skull and we're going to dry brush up his leather work. I've also taken a bit of uh, Ushapti Bone, which is the bad pot, and painted in the skulls that are on his necklace and a few teeth that are down here on his leg. So we're just going to give the leather a light dry brush of the Tarrant Skull. And we'll switch uh, brush size, we'll go down a brush size, I think, uh, for the smaller detail.
All right, so a bit of a basic highlight, but that looks all right. And let me see from here, I think we could start working on the tattoos or the, the markings a little bit. So for this, let me see here, I have a contrast paint waiting in the wings, sort of. Going to use Athermatic Blue. And what we're going to do is just basically apply that over the grey sear, but let it sit down onto the skin as well. And uh, once that's down, we can then actually highlight with a, a very bright sort of a colour, so probably a, a bright blue or something like that. Just to give that sort of a, a look of a glow going on there. So it's quite a light, uh, quite a thin contrast paint is Athematic Blue. So all it's really doing is tinting, slightly tinting the skin that's near it, which works for me. So again, not overly strong. That's why I keep saying that contrast paint is just a, another tool in the box and when you start to find little applications like this for it, this is where it does really shine. So that does not look bad at all. Okay, so how is our black doing? Yep, that looks fine. So on the back, uh, let's see if we have a colour a decent enough colour to uh, dry brush this with, or colour it with. Um, to be honest, I'm probably just going to go back to Praxetti White. So, back to this again. And we'll just give it a bit of a, a light coat of this. make it look a bit more interesting. So, something like that. Keep it simple. And then what we can do is, as before with the other leather work, we can take a bit of Steel Legion Drab and paint in the two straps that are holding the blades on. What I'm also going to do is paint on, uh, paint this onto the areas that I think look like they have leather wrapped around the, the handles, which I'm fairly certain are made of bone, or they look like they have sort of a bone sort of texture to them. That paint's a bit too thin yet. Okay. And then again onto the handles. And then what I'll do as well is go back in with uh, Ushabdi Bone and paint in the ends to make it look like they are actually made of bone. After that it's going to be a case of applying some more Skeleton Horde to those areas. which we'll just do off camera, I'll just talk about doing it here now. Uh, so we'll do the Echap de Bone, give our new leather work a bit of the Skeleton Horde paint, or Skeleton Horde contrast. And then I think after that, what will we do after that? We'll bring up the markings a bit brighter. And honestly, I think that would probably do. There's a little bit of metallic work well, there's a couple of feathers that are hanging off his arm here and here. Uh, we'll base coat those with um, 
Ooh, Wraith Boom. And then we'll give them a a colour as well, probably a red maybe to contrast up and give some, some visual interest. Uh, so yeah, off camera what we're about to do then is paint in the ends of these blades in uh, Ushapti Bone. We'll then give our new leather straps, our new pieces of leather, skeleton hoard as well as the handles of the two blades. And then we'll put a bit of wraith bone onto these feathers and quickly give them a colour under camera when we come back. So we're almost there. Almost there. So what I'm going to do first is take a little bit of uh, Agrax or Shade. And what we're going to do is put that over the bone parts on his necklace and on the teeth on his leg. So we just want to shade them a little bit, not too much though. So again, it's just a matter of going in and just applying a bit of this to each of these skulls and teeth there. each of the teeth down here like so and you can see on the back the swords are pretty much where I want them to be which looks fine uh, is there anywhere else I want to put this I think maybe up in the eyes of the wolf pelt and just maybe into the ears as well okay so that's done let's move that wash out of the way and let's get some uh, Blood Angel's red and put it down onto the feathers on his arms. Now I've actually base coated those in uh, Citadel White Scar. I couldn't find my Wraith Bone. I thought the White Scar would give me a more interesting or bright flash of colour. So, Which it is certainly doing. Who knows what this, what uh, bird these are from, but I think it looks good to me. Anything like this that has a lot of natural sort of browns and stuff in it could always do with a little flash of something interesting just to draw the eye. You know, as I say that, I'm like, well, we're about to do a, a bright blue as well, which will add even more to it. So on his tattoos, let me get that out of the way and move my so-called palette over. On the tattoos, we're going to highlight the patterns themselves by using some Toxic Mist from Army Painter. Gorgeous bright, bright blue. One of my favourite colours. It's a very retro colour, this sort of uh, baby blue, sort of powder blue. It's looking quite interesting there now, so we want to do the other one on his shoulder.
Down onto the leg. Quite like that. So yeah, that's turned out okay. Now, clean these off. And is there anything else I think I've left out that I really should do? No, I'm going to say I'm happy with that. So we're going to let that dry. I'm going to paint the base black. We'll give him a coat of matte varnish as usual, and then we'll wrap the video. So here we have our ghost wolf all done. And there is one thing I had missed, which you probably noticed from this angle, is the nose on the wolf pelt. So I painted that in with a little bit of black paint before I put my matte varnish down. But overall, I'm very happy with how he's turned out. The biggest success of this video, I think, is the skin tone. I'm very happy with how that's turned out. He's got excellent muscle tone in there, and that's allowed all that detail has allowed me to play with the, the skin and get something that looks pretty effective. So you can let me know in the comments what you think of that method for doing skin. I'm sure there's other ways and there's better ways to do it. I know there's better ways to do it. But what I've ended up with here is something that I'm happy with, and if that's what you can say at the end of painting something uh, that you're not familiar with, then sure, what's the, what's the problem with that? I think the wolf pelt turned out okay. It's maybe just a little light. The weapons, I'm not too worried about them. I like his markings as well. I like how the blues have, have played onto that and you know, just added a bit of extra, extra detail to him. Uh, the feathers, well, obviously you could do more with them. But overall, if you're gonna put that down on the table, I think I'd be very happy to see someone playing with something painted like that. So, I'll just do one more rotation for you just to let you see all around him. And with that, that's another one done and dusted. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Put your comments down below. Stay safe out there, and I will see you all again very soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.